So we're now going to consider the work done by the gravitational force. So let's consider the work done on this ball by gravity once I have thrown it. So as it's traveling up, it's getting slower and slower, and it's getting slower because the gravitational force is pulling it down. So the gravitational force is doing work on the ball. In this case, the displacement was in the vertical direction, which is the same direction that the weight force, mg, is acting on the ball. So we can say, well, the work is equal to f dot s, and this is given by the force, which is minus mg in this case. The negative sign shows that it's going downwards. And then the displacement is h, where h is the height above my hand to which the ball gets. So in this case, the work done by the gravitational force on the ball is equal to minus mg h. Now, when negative work is done on an object, it is losing kinetic energy. And that is indeed what happened to the ball. As it left my hand, it had a relatively high speed. At the very top, when it got to height h, it had absolutely no speed. At the top, it came to rest. Now let's consider what work is done on the ball by the gravitational force as it returns to my hand from this maximum height. So in this case, the force acting on the ball is still the weight force, which is still directed downwards, so it's still minus mg. But now the displacement is from h to 0, so the displacement is minus h. So our work done is equal to minus mg times minus h, which is equal to mgh, which tells us that it's gaining kinetic energy, which is indeed what we observe. It had no speed up here, and then it was traveling relatively quickly down here. Now, if we consider the entire throw, the net work done by the gravitational force is equal to the work done as it goes up, plus the work done while it comes down. So that's equal to minus mgh plus mgh, which gives us zero. So because there is no work done by the gravitational force, which is the only force acting on the ball, we're neglecting any air resistance. This tells us that the kinetic energy of the ball is conserved between the initial state and the final state. So when it leaves my hand, as long as my hand is at the same height, it returns to my hand with the same kinetic energy and hence the same speed as it had when it went up. We already knew this because we'd already seen this in our kinematic equation. We have v squared equals u squared plus 2as. In this case, there is no displacement. It's returning to the same point, so s is equal to 0. So we know from that kinematic equation that v squared equals u squared. So we can actually use work in one dimension to c come up with this kinematic equation. It's another approach we can take to getting this equation because we know that the work done on the object is equal to the change of the kinetic energy, which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So the work done is equal to the force times the displacement. We're just doing one dimension here. So the force and displacement are in the same direction. And that's equal to a half mv squared minus a half mu squared. The force is equal to ma. Newton's law tells us that. So multiplying all the sides of the equation by 2, we can end up with 2mas is equal to mv squared minus mu squared, which tells us that 2as is equal to v squared minus u squared, which is equivalent to v squared equals u squared plus 2as. OK, so that was not too hard because we were just considering the vertical direction. What happens if we have a bit of displacement horizontally as well? So let's go back and look at when I threw the ball to Bryony. When I threw the ball to Bryony, the ball had some horizontal velocity as well as having the vertical motion. So in this case, there was a displacement of the ball. Bryony was on the left, so the total displacement was minus 3.0 meters in the I direction. Now, let's consider once the ball's in the air. So this isn't while I'm actually throwing the ball. This is once the ball's been released and is traveling. The only force acting on the ball, because we're neglecting air resistance to keep everything simple for now, is equal to the weight force. So the weight force pulls the ball downwards, and it is given by minus mg in the j direction. 
So the work done on the ball by the gravitational force as it goes from me to Bryony is equal to F dot S. But in this case, the force and the displacement are perpendicular to each other. And when we take the dot product of two vectors which are perpendicular to each other, we get zero. So in this case, the gravitational force is not doing any work on the ball. So it is possible to have a displacement with no work done if the displacement is perpendicular to the force applied. So in this case, because no work is done, it tells us that as long as Bryony was at the same height as I, as long as Bryony catches the ball at the same height I threw it from, kinetic energy must be conserved. And so the speed of the ball when it leaves my hand is the same as the speed of the ball when it is entering Bryony's hand. Possibly by this point you're feeling a little bit confused because at the very start of the energy topic we said that the energy of a, of a closed system was always conserved. So what's going on in this case when I throw it vertically because initially it's got kinetic energy then we were saying it didn't have any kinetic energy up the top and then it had kinetic energy again. So the energy was here, it wasn't here and then it was here. So what's happened? I mean, part of the explanation is the work, but the work is just a transfer mechanism. So we said that as it moved up, negative work was done on the ball by the gravitational force. But where is the work transferring that energy to? Well, it turns out that in this case, the work is transferring the energy to another form of energy called gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is a way of storing energy when you displace an object through a gravitational field. There's other types of potential energy as well. So for example, you can have electrical potential energy if you displace an object, a charged object through an electrical field. So potential energy is just a way of storing energy which can later be converted back into kinetic energy. So considering energy conservation, we need to consider a closed system. So in this case, our closed system consists of the Earth, because the Earth is pro providing the gravitational field, me, because I'm needed to throw the ball, and the ball. So in this system, energy is conserved. Initially, the ball has kinetic energy and a certain amount of potential energy. If we want, we could choose this as our zero point for potential energy. We'll talk more about choosing zero points for energy later. So we can say initially the energy of the ball is in the form of kinetic energy. As it goes up, the gravitational force is doing work on the ball and so it's converting the kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy. At the very top, all of the energy is now in the form of gravitational potential energy. And then on the way back down, as positive work is done on the ball by the gravitational force, the potential energy is converted back into kinetic energy until it gets back to my hand, at which point it's back to its zero point for potential energy and all the energy is once again in the form of kinetic energy. Okay, so this is physics. Let's write down some equations to describe this. So the letter that we use for potential energy is capital U. So the change in potential energy, delta U, is equal to the negative work done on the object. So delta U is equal to minus W. So in the case of the ball, when it was going from my hand, the, we can call this initial potential energy zero. And up here, we're going to calculate what it was. Okay, so let's calculate minus W as the ball goes from my hand up to maximum height, we calculated W at the very start in that case and we said that it was equal to minus mgh. So that tells us that the change in potential energy is equal to mgh. So the change in potential energy we can also write as the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy and if we then define this point as zero potential energy, and this is height zero, then at this height it's got potential energy mgh. So sometimes you'll see the formula for gravitational potential energy for objects near the surface of the earth written as u is equal to mgh. Or you can also write it as delta u is equal to mg delta h, where the delta means a change. 
So let's have a look at an example problem now. 